Often the medicine the doctors prescribe not only doesn't cure the illness, but it actually makes it worse. I remember that one of the times that we went to one of the 50 or so doctors, 50 plus doctors, you know, every doctor tried something else with us. You know, so one of the doctors we went to was a uh, highly acclaimed doctor who uh, did all types of extremely painful tests on me. Nerve tests and so on. Now, nerve tests doesn't sound like a really painful test unless you have hypersensitivity. Now, if I give you a nerve test, I take one of these little machines and I zap you a little bit, it may be uncomfortable, it may not, it may, you may actually even like it. 50-50 chance. Athletes sometimes use it to heal, to heal their body for, for, for things like that. Now, if you do that same exact electric shock to someone that has hypersensitivity, which means that it's not that they feel pain, they feel 100 times pain, 1,000 times pain, meaning that, let's say, for example, you go like this to your own hand, it doesn't hurt, right? You go like this, it's not going to hurt. Maybe if you do it hard, it hurts a little bit, but not much. Someone that has hypersensitivity, if you do this, they feel like you put a nail in their hand. That's hypersensitivity, just to give you a nice visual. So now, the certain parts of my body have hypersensitivity. So now he put these tests on them. You should imagine the fun we had. It was a blast. It was just wonderful going to this doctor. Now, after we finished this experience that you're never going to forget, and my poor wife is watching the whole thing and crying with me. Now, after we finished this fun, he tells me, listen, I think you have some nerve issues and this, this, and that. Here's some pills that's going to help you. Here's some pills I'm going to help you. Now, at this point, I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm not suicidal. You know, I'm in pain. I don't like it. Once in a while, the pain subsides to a certain extent to make life worth it. But overall, more or less, I'm still okay. I'm still optimistic about the future. I still don't think that I'm going to be like this permanently or for seven or ten years or something like that. I think that this is going to go away at some point. It's only a matter of time before I find a solution. That's what we're going to all these doctors. So this is maybe year number four or five. And we get this medicine and uh, get somebody picks it up for me. I get the medicine. And, you know, I used to smoke cigarettes back then. And I would go for smoke breaks. Waste life that way. And uh, I went downstairs. And I'm smoking a cigarette. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at traffic. You know, we're on Wall Street, so there's not that much traffic. You know, Wall Street is uh, highly secure, so there's only like, you know, delivery trucks and, you know, uh, taxis going there. There's not like real traffic there, because it's security, it's a big mess. But anyway, this car is moving. And I'm just sitting there, and there's other people there, and I'm looking at the cars moving once in a while. And I start visualizing, like, well, maybe I should like run in front of that car and kill myself. Hmm. Nah, it should be truck. Then I look at someone else. I'm like, yeah, this UPS truck, that's going to do the job. Yeah, yeah, this UPS truck, this is definitely good. It's perfect. No, maybe UPS. And I'm starting to visualize my own death. And then I catch myself. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? And I call my wife. I'm like, honey, look at that medicine. She says, why? I said, just tell me. Is one of the side effects being suicidal? She looks at it. She starts screaming. Goes, yes. I'm like, honey, take that stuff and throw it in the garbage. You actually, that, when they say side effects X, Y, Z, I was one of those people that always got it. I'm like the 1% that always got the side effect. But the side effects are not like, oh, you get depressed. No, no, no. You actually start visualizing things. It's the craziest thing in the world, what this stuff does to you. So, so I thought that the medicine's going to help me. That only hurt me. So here we see, Rabotai Karim, that sometimes the medicine that you think is going to help you, if you think it's the medicine, then of course you are, you are sicker than what you thought. Because even when you take medicine, there's actually a bracha. There's a bracha that you're supposed to say before you take medicine to... Admit to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that you know that He is the only way you're going to heal and to please make this chalk into a solution. To please make this syrup 
into the cure. It's not that the syrup is the cure. It's not that the piece of plastic is the cure. It's not that the piece of chalk is the cure. No, that's not the cure. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the cure. And he can decide to make this chalk or this plastic or this syrup into something that helps you. Plenty of people take that piece of chalk and call it a pill and it doesn't do anything for them. Plenty of people take the same syrup and it actually kills them instead of heals them. You're supposed to do a bracha and say, Hashem, please, make this chalk because you're the only cure. This, you could say it in your own words. You could say it, I could give you the words after the shiur. I could eat, send it to you. But the point is, Abu is to always know that it's a Baruch Hu that's the cure. Nothing else. Nothing else.